Very good. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, it is 7.05 ish. Uh, and uh, all selectmen are present this evening. Um, I want to uh, make note of the fact that uh, er everyone here this evening is wearing an article of pink uh, in recognition of uh, October being Breast Cancer Awareness, uh, and we will be doing so at this meeting as, as well as the next meeting this month. Uh, so hopefully uh, to give everyone a, a moment of pause as they consider the people in their life uh, that have been affected by breast cancer, uh, and uh, again, to be more aware of it and perhaps uh, provide funding or support to those that are in need. So thank you very much to all of you, and um, thanks for whomever. I'm not sure who the uh, who my predecessor was that started this tradition. I'm, I'm certainly delighted as the current chair to continue it. So thank you to that for that. Um, if I could uh, ask all members present, all people present to stand, and we will pledge allegiance. Uh, Mr. McCoy, would you start us out, please, sir? Sure, thank you. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag. flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have uh, minutes from June 22nd of 2015, Board of Selectmen meeting to approve. Is there a motion? Get the warrants. Let's not do that yet, and thank you, Luke. Okay. Uh, we do have treasury warrants. I jumped over one. Treasury uh, warrants 14, 14A, 15, and 15A uh, to warrants. be approved. Read by the chairman. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you again. Um, and so now we are at the minutes from June 22nd. Is there a motion? So moved. Right. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there discussion on that? I see none. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, brings us to our uh, 7 o'clock appointment with Chris Peters of K1 Speed Incorporated uh, for his request to obtain a common victualler's license for the property located at 40 Fordham Street. For, I'm sorry, 40 Fordham Road. Mr. Peters? Michael McGuire standing in for uh, Chris Peters. Hi, Mr. McGuire. Um, if we could ask you, uh, sir, to maybe take a seat at the uh, side table sure. and uh, summarize the nature of the request. Well, we're an indoor family entertainment go-kart company. Uh, can I tell you a little bit about the company, or would you like to? Yeah, know? that's certainly appropriate for me, sure. Um, been in existence uh, going on 13 years. Uh, we're a Southern ba California-based. Um, we have, uh, this will be our 29th location within the uh, United States. Uh, our second uh, state of Massachusetts, by the way, uh, we opened in Kingston uh, about uh, six months ago. So we're really excited to, uh, to be up here. Um, our primary uh, product is indoor go-karting. These are electric carts. Um, we have an adult larger cart and we also have one for the kids junior carts is there a weight limit on the adult one? <laughs> <laughs> well yeah we kind of say uh, over 240 50 pounds is pretty much the uh, we, we I get those requests had a guy the other day asked me he sent me an email jokingly I know but guy said he was 400 pounds wanted to know if he could ride the carts and I'm like unfortunately um, so our primary product is is, is go-karting uh, this is an indoor attraction um, we have We've obviously acquired the uh, property at 40 uh, Fordham. Um, um, with the go-karting comes, um, we don't do alcohol, so it's all family oriented. We do team building events. We do birthday parties for kids. Um, we have a small concession that's just gonna be no, no cooking or it's all gonna be frozen, you know, make a pizza or have popcorn. And it's just like going to a ball game concessions, basically, just real simple. And then we'll have, we'll talk a little bit earlier later about the video games that we have, but um, which is a small portion of our business as well. Um, again, 70, you know, 75 to 80% of what we do is, is just people coming in, uh, what we call arrive and drives. You walk in, you, you sign a release form, you basically say, I wanna race your, the carts, you pay, for whatever, how many races you'd like to purchase, and uh, you're off and running. There's no height requirement, excuse me, there's no age requirement, it's all based on height. So for the smaller carts, uh, you have to be four feet, and for the larger carts, you have to be four feet 10. Uh, we, we give you a, 
uh, once you sign a release and saying you're you're going to drive, and of course a parent a parent has to sign for the for the children. Um, then our, our uh, employees then are trained to give everybody a a brief instruction on how to race, the do's and don'ts. This is not bumper carts, you know. We're not there to knock people over or push people. Does it happen once in a while? Sure. Um, but uh, bottom line is, it's a uh, it's, it's for the person that likes to race and uh, strictly automatic carts. Um, top end on a straightaway, the adult carts, I know one of you guys were definitely going to ask me this question, so <laughs> would probably hit up to about 40 miles an hour. But our tracks are don't, are, you know, they're more like figure eight designs, so you don't ever get, you never can get that fast. But uh, I'm sorry, maybe you said it and I, I wasn't. Uh, are the patrons? Are the adult racers helmeted? Is there oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So everybody is hel everybody wears a. Uh, actually, we prefer we give you a nice headgear to co cover your your head, so so you don't have to have the lice and stuff from helmets. So it's nice and clean head headgear, head sock, and then we put a nice helmet on you and we strap you in with seat belts, and uh, strictly automatic. As I said, gas on the right, brake on the left, and we give you all. And there's flagging. You know, there's guys out there flagging. The different flags will show you. You know, hey, slow down, caution stop um, the thing I should have mentioned too and I almost forgot these we have a, a remote control we can censor the speeds so when somebody's doing something that they shouldn't be doing we can slow the carts down we can we can stop the acceleration of the carts as well so we've got all of the security measures pretty much set up uh, again we wouldn't be doing this around the country if we weren't pretty much dialed in so um, I guess that's pretty much who we are and, and uh, what we're looking to do here at uh, in Wilmington. Thank you. I'm sorry. It was Mr. McGuire. Yeah, is that it's right? Mike. Call me Mike, please. Mr. McGuire. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. No. Thank you very much. I I, I guess um, Jeff, why don't I go to you and then I'll ask uh, the, the, to see if there's any questions from members of the, of the board. Uh, recommendations or? Yes, uh, we have a recommendation from Shelley Newhouse, the health director. Uh, she writes, I recommend approval of the application for common victualler license for K1 Speed, 40 Fordham Road, Wilmington, Mass. Uh, recommendation from Al Spaulding, the building inspector, after review and consideration of the town of Wilmington bylaw and all applicable codes, I have no outstanding zoning issues uh, with the above mentioned business. Thank you, Jeff. Um, so I will open it up to questions uh, from the members here, and if it's all right, uh, I'll start with you, Mr. Newhouse, over to the right. Uh, I think that. All the information that was provided is uh, enough for me to make a decision. Thanks. Lou, anything? Yeah, myself too. Uh, I just noticed on your application 20 employees. Have you started hiring? Uh, uh, we're, we're in the process of hiring managers. Okay. Uh, we haven't started the, uh, the hourly positions uh, yet. Um, we're still a few weeks away from, from opening the doors, so okay. we're, not quite, we're not quite there yet. Um, yeah, we, we average between 20 and 25 employees uh, in the center. On the total schedule, uh, on any given shift, you may operate with anywhere from, you know, on a minimum staffing with four or five people, and then of course on a busy Saturday, which is our busiest day, you know, we may be looking at eight to ten folks. The way we do it, guys and, and ladies, is um, we normally have at least three to four guys working the actual track, and and procuring the safety and making sure that everybody's driving accordingly and proper, and then we have our. Uh, our cashiers or our behind-the-counter people that are the POS people that are selling the actual packages and and uh, serving you up and things like that so and then we have mechanics that work on the carts and then we also have our management personnel I, uh, actually one bit of information uh, just out of curiosity what are the projected hours of operation what do you when do you yes yeah, good question um, so Monday through Thursday uh, we will open it between right around noon and then we close around 10 p.m. Fridays and Saturdays, we open a little earlier, 10 or 11 a.m., close at midnight. <coughs> and then uh, Sundays, we may have to talk about it. Um, Sundays is normally a uh, 11 to 10 operation. Close at 10 o'clock on Sunday nights. Uh, Ms. McCoy, anything? I'm good, thanks. Good? I was going to ask about the hours of operation, which mm -hmm. Mr. Newhouse <coughs> did. Um, so, wanted to see if you could share, just for the general public, uh, an approximate opening date that you're targeting <sighs> range-wise yeah I wish I it. could have told as a Friday I had a better idea but it's kind of changed over the weekend um, I'm gonna say uh, we're probably looking somewhere mid-December now so mid-December yeah it kind of it, it was pushed back obviously there's always issues with construction and things like that so um, 
Yeah, we were hoping mid-November, but I think it's going to be a month out. And then also, too, um, do you have a working website at this point that people could go to for K1 more information? What is it? Sorry. K1 Speed, the letter K, the number one, speed, as we say it, S-P-E-E-D, dot com. Dot com. Okay, thank you. Just obviously with the... Um, don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. We haven't taken the vote, but assuming that everything goes your way, I'm sure people would be interested in this for, you know, a Christmas option or whatnot. Oh, well, we so. hope so, and I, I know, well, we hope we're open by Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> so help me uh, geographically. I know it's 40 Fordham Street. Uh, maybe Jeff, you know, is this where the, the book place book. was? Yes. Okay, so it's on the right side, heading up towards the Shriners. That's correct. Very well. Okay, yes, thank you. Um, unless there's more questions, um, this is for the victualler's license only. Um, so I would uh, accept a motion. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous for the common victualler's license. Thank Sit tight for just Appreciate a moment that. there. Glad to be here. We're excited. Next is with Chris Beaton. What's that? The next slide is with Chris Beaton. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the 7 o'clock. The 710 is uh, with Mr. Peters. Mr. Peters, are you here? Um, so, Mr. McGuire, this is uh, the public hearing uh, to request and uh, uh, obtain an automatic amusement device license, eight devices, and billiard room license for one table for the property located at 40 Fordham Street. So, if you want to expand on that request, sir. Be glad to. Very simple. Uh, it's a very small part of our operation. We'll, we'll have about seven or eight pieces, um, <clears throat> a basketball toss, um, a couple of probably a racing uh, simulator type game, a um, couple other video games, non-violent, non-religious, non non-anything that's going to, you know, uh, jeopardize or in scare away anybody. Um, and then, of course, the billiard will have one pool table. Um, this is basically, we have this, uh, everyone, just as a, as a filler for, for when people are waiting to race. Um, we don't we we make, make we literally don't make very much money here um, because we're not we don't consider ourselves an arcade uh, as as we all as some of us know as in our younger years where arcades were really big um, but uh, yeah so but we do have it. it it's a it's a nice place nice piece to have for when people are, are waiting in line and and you know uh, there's nothing else for them to do so we offer the, the the few games and that's really it there's not much to it it takes very little space um, Again, it's non-violent, non-discriminative type stuff. Like I said, basketball tossed. May have a little uh, plush game or little one of those crane things where you can, you know, pick up a toy, pick Never up a piece of plush. <laughs> yeah, very simple. Not much more to say. Thank you. Hope that uh, gives you enough. Uh, we'll we'll see if there's any questions. Uh, do you have the um, certified uh, receipts uh, from the certified mail? Um. Uh, they were already delivered. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, and uh, because it is a public hearing, uh, well, first let me go to my colleagues here. Uh, are, are there questions about that, this aspect of it, the amusements and pool tables? Uh, just looking for confirmation, uh, my understanding is all of this stuff is indoors, right? That's so, correct. Okay. Yes, and sir. Because you had raised a point that I hadn't even thought about <clears throat> is with regard to the Sunday hours. If everything's indoors I don't imagine we need to be terribly concerned about um, you know what effect if any you're gonna have <clears throat> I mean it's not a residential neighborhood um, but just in case there are any places of worship that were an issue with any outdoor activity so if as long as and I understand that's you know the use and is regulated by other authorities but I just wanted to make sure I got that confirmation so yeah if it's all indoors uh, I don't have any questions or objections. To show that the, the panel or the staff were quick, but obviously um, I've been in the business a long time, and of course back in the day it was all gas and it was all outside, mm -hmm. and now the business is, has literally gone to the in indoors in their electric carts, no fumes, no fuss, no mess. It's it's a it's pretty nice. I mean, it's it's a really safe environment too. Not as much, and well. I imagine extending your season around here, it'd be hard to have a gas related. Well, that's gas. that's the ultimate. Obviously, mm. no matter what, you know, there's no seasonal problems. Whether you're in the heat in uh, Texas or uh, Arizona, or you're in the winter in the East Coast, yeah. Unless what? you can't get to the building. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had happen. that. We've had that happen. It's we've not going to happen this year. Yeah. Not in Wilmington. Um, any other questions or 
It's all good. Everything's been answered, and best of luck. Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Hall, or recommendations? <coughs> uh, recommendation from uh, Chief Mike Bagonis, Police Chief. Uh, upon review, the Wilmington Police Department recommends approval of the 2015 license application to operate automatic amusement devices and one billiard table at K1 Speed, Inc., located at 40 Fordham Road, Wilmington, Mass. Mm -hmm. uh, recommendation from Al Spaulding, building inspector, after review and consideration of the Town of Wilmington bylaw and applicable codes, I have no outstanding zoning issues uh, with the above mentioned business. Uh, I would just uh, suggest that where there are two specific licenses involved that the board uh, vote on each license uh, separately, the automatic amusement <coughs> license for the eight machines as well as, and then separately, the billiard room license for one table. Thank you. It is a public hearing, so I'll ask if there's anyone in the audience that wants to say anything. I see no questions, so I'll close the public hearing and uh, uh, accept a motion from someone on the board for the automatic mu amusement license. I move to grant the request for the automatic amusement device license for eight devices. Second. So, motion's made and seconded. I'll, I'll accept a second by Mr. Newhouse. Uh, all in favor? That's unanimous. Is there a motion for the billiard table? I move to grant the request for a billiard room license for one table at the property located at 40 uh, Fordham Road in Wilmington. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Again, thank you for the information. Jeff, is it um, reasonable to jump all the way down to number nine in communications as a board to consider where it speaks specifically to the Sunday hours for K-1, or do we want to just take that in sequence? Uh, no, I think it's fine. Uh, just because you were here, I thought uh, we would, if it's all right with the board, uh, number nine in our, in our agenda uh, does have a board to consider issuing a Sunday entertainment license to K-1 Speed. And I thought with uh, Mr. McGuire present, we might as well take that up unless there's objection to any, by anyone. I see none. I make a motion we issue the Sunday Entertainment License to K1 Speed, Inc. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Uh, any discussion or questions? I see none. All in favor? Unanimous again. Mr. McGuire, thank you for coming this evening, and good luck to you. Hey, guys. We appreciate it. Thank you. Ladies, thank you. Thank you. Beverly, appreciate it. Be there. Okay, Be there. <laughs> this is just for your signature. Okay. Where? Just uh, right in this line. Can we get a graph? Oh, there it is. Okay. Thank you. Our 720 appointment is a uh, discussion uh, amongst us, the Board of Selectmen, with specific regards to the Northeast Energy Direct project. Uh, I see Paul Aluni is joining us uh, this evening, and uh, uh, there was a memo included in our packets from Jeff to talk about this specifically. So I guess uh, given that, uh, Jeff, I'll, after you've sort of organized the papers, I'll ask you to sort of take on the, the lead role of managing this discussion. Okay. Uh, this evening, um, what I am uh, looking uh, to do is to make essentially two recommendations to the board uh, with regard to the uh, status of uh, the town's position on Kinder Morgan. You'll recall that they first came before the board in July of 2014. Uh, the initial route uh, uh, was uh, actually impacted uh, some fairly significantly the town in terms of uh, being within the zone one of two of our drinking water wells. <clears throat> it was also uh, within uh, close proximity to uh, the neighborhood around Charlotte Road, Draper Drive, and Lakaya Circle. Uh, those issues were expressed on several occasions with representatives of Kinder Morgan. Uh, on April 21st, we had a meeting uh, with uh, representatives from Kinder Morgan. They agreed at that time, at least preliminarily, to uh, relocate uh, the course of this uh, pipeline 
uh, essentially along a utility corridor that runs uh, from the Tewksbury Andover line uh, through Wilmington entering into North Reading. Uh, that uh, course was certainly more beneficial than the original course. It uh, took the uh, pipeline out of the uh, Zone 1 uh, water protection area of our two wells. Uh, there were some vernal pools that were impacted under the original uh, proposal. Uh, but there were, were still concerns, or are still concerns that remain. One of those uh, principal concerns is the fact that this uh, pipeline runs uh, in close proximity to the Benevento uh, aggregate uh, facility off of Route 62. Uh, this is an active quarry. Uh, there's blasting that goes on there, uh, certainly on a weekly basis, I believe, at least three times a week. Uh, and the question that uh, the staff has posed is whether a high pressure uh, gas line uh, running in such uh, uh, an area would be compromised with the blasting that goes on. We've had uh, multiple conversations uh, with the representatives from Kendra Morgan. Uh, we've requested information from them about other locations uh, that are comparable in, uh, in their nature, that is, quarries that are active with the pipelines running uh, near them. Uh, we were given uh, two particular locations, but have never, uh, at least to this point, been provided with any specific information about their uh, track record. Uh, and the, the most recent meeting that we had was uh, in uh, the end of uh, September. Uh, staff, including Paul uh, Aluni, who's really been the point person on this in terms of both monitoring the, uh, the process with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, uh, FERC. Uh, we're in this pre-filing phase right now. There's been a number of uh, public uh, meetings, public hearings that uh, he and others have uh, participated in, uh, Valerie Gingrich. Uh, Mike Woods also been involved, and at the last meeting, uh, Chairman Shampoo also attended. Uh, unfortunately, at that meeting, we were not able to get any additional information about the track record uh, for these uh, types of pipelines uh, near um, uh, near uh, quarries. Uh, we've been uh, advised that they, that uh, that information is forthcoming. Uh, but as of today, we've still not seen that. Um, so clearly that is a major issue. Uh, also, in the fact that this uh, pipeline uh, still runs within uh, the Zone 2 protection area for our drinking water wells. Zone 2 uh, is a greater distance from the actual uh, wellheads, but still um, while not perhaps as, as sensitive as being within a zone one, still uh, is an area that we want to uh, preserve to the greatest extent possible and avoid any kind of contamination there. Uh, so that uh, raises some measure of concern as well. Uh, and then beyond those uh, issues particular to Wilmington is just the more general concern that uh, well, we've, it's been suggested to us that this uh, pipeline is necessary to address the regional energy demands. <clears throat> the fact of the matter is that, uh, at least directly, there's no, um, there, there's no benefit to residents of Wilmington. Uh, this pipeline will come through Wilmington, go into North Reading, and eventually uh, wind up in Peabody where the uh, gas will be distributed to uh, National Grid and other customers that uh, Kinder Morgan is able to sign up. So it's not a situation here where <coughs> residents or businesses are able to uh, connect to this line. <coughs> uh, Kinder Morgan has suggested to us that they believe over time with the increased uh, supply of gas it will have an, uh, an effect on um, <clears throat> on the rates that uh, subscribers to gas pay, but that at this point is, uh, is speculative. <clears throat> so with all that 
being said, uh, and also the fact that there have been two, there's one study that was completed uh, by uh, the Mass Department of Environmental Resources, Energy Resources, uh, about the need for this gas pipeline, and a second uh, study that is uh, slated to be completed at the end of October. Um, it is uh, essentially my recommendation uh, that the board uh, oppose this uh, this pipeline project. It's uh, well in terms of the the uh, de the demand for the energy. I think is the original study that was done by DOER suggested the demand existed. Uh, there's some question as to whether some of the assumptions that were made in that study uh, are accurate, um, namely whether um, natural gas will become as prominent a, a source of energy as is being projected. And then obviously this second study is not uh, slated to come out until the end of the month. Uh, given all those points that I raised, uh, I really uh, do not believe it's um, in the town's best interest to uh, uh, to support this project. So that is um, uh, the first uh, point I would make in terms of the recommendation. The second has to do with the process that the uh, Kinder Morgan will be entering uh, presumably in the next few weeks, and that is the formal filing process. So at this point, everything has been informal, if you will. They've been conducting these public forums to gather information and input. Uh, once they file with FERC, uh, there will be a more formal, uh, more formal proceedings, uh, and the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission will uh, take comments uh, from uh, parties that are uh, interveners. It's my recommendation uh, that the town, the Board of Selectmen, uh, uh, adopt a resolution that would uh, make the town an intervener in this process. Uh, that affords the town certain uh, legal rights that, that the town would not otherwise have, uh, namely in terms of uh, any kind of uh, filings that we may uh, wish to, uh, to make with FERC and principally at the end of this, if the decision uh, is to authorize the Linfield lateral, uh, being an intervener affords the town certain appeal rights. Uh, so essentially that is, um, those are the two recommendations uh, that I would put forward to the board. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Mr. Looney, I know you're here uh, to, uh, you're the subject matter expert, and I, I don't want to put you on the spot unnecessarily, but if you had uh, any other context or additional detail, I wanted to make sure we give you an opportunity to chime in if there's anything you wanted to share. Um, I think Jeff, uh, manager, hit all the points that made. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, yeah, well, it is a, a board discussion, so I certainly want to open it right up and, and, and engage everyone's thoughts or opinions on this. Uh, there are a couple of board to consider items relative to it um, that we probably should take up uh, at the conclusion of our conversation. So, um, I don't know, I'll, I'll, Mr. McCoy, I suppose uh, I tend to usually start at the extremes, so if it's okay with you, I'll, yeah, I'll go to you. I say, I mean, I said from day one, as, as all we have said since day one, the whole entire board and the manager, if the town of Wilmington can benefit from this, then we would like to take a look at it, a glance at it. But obviously the town of Wilmington is going to benefit zero. And uh, as stated by the town manager, I support the facts and uh, I totally agree that it's uh, be very hard pressed to uh, support something like that at this time because the town is not going to benefit from it. And there's a lot of skeptics out there pertaining to this uh, pipeline. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, please, right. Uh, yeah, I would agree with uh, Mr. McCoy and, and uh, prepared to accept the manager's recommendation. I just have a, a specific uh, question for the manager in regards to the, um, the proposed resolution. Is that, is that appropriate to bring that up at this point? Or? Um, do you mind, Mike, if we just sort of, uh, uh, sort of engage in the open sure. discussion, sort of opinion yep. discussion, and then we'll get into the, the language of the, of the yep. subject? Okay. 
So uh, again, uh, the opinions of whether or not to oppose or what, what folks' feelings are on the, on the Kinder Morgan project as a whole or on the Linfield Lateral as it relates to coming through town, uh, I, I guess I'll voice my, my I, I'm reiterating what I already said a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, I feel like there's more pain than there is reward. Uh, and I used the analogy of Route 93 a couple of generations ago, but you know, at least there was advantages that, that uh, the residents had to endure some inconvenience and some pain in order to afford uh, the highway to come through the town, but the, the town has certainly enjoyed great benefits from the presence of the highway over the course of the last several decades. Uh, and we continue to enjoy the, those, those same benefits in terms of economic growth and development and access to um, the city and to New Hampshire, et cetera. Um, there's a fair amount of pain and anguish associated with the, the installing of this line. Uh, and in my opinion, there's far too much risk, uh, both to our water aquifers as well as just there's there's no evidence that I've we have not been able to glean any substantive data driven evidence from Kinder Morgan that they have in place similar uh, scoped projects in uh, blasting areas where there's active blasting. Uh, you know they've given us conjectural evidence. They've said that they do, but you know I don't have the data. And Mr. Uh, Aluni, I don't think you have the data. I, I'm not feeling warm and fuzzy that they actually have the the confidence to do this. They say they do, but for me, their verbal assurances are not sufficient for me to, to rise to the level of supporting it. And so uh, given those, and as well as a few other dozen reasons, I've risen to the level of not supporting the project at all. So that's my opinion on it. I certainly want to share, uh, open it up to Lou and Judy to articulate their thoughts if they wish to. I would just say that, you know, all the major points have been made. I mean, from the water standpoint, the benefit to residents, I think uh, it's, it's all been said. You know, I would also say, you know, Benevento has been a, a long time standing business there. I mean, this would significantly encumber that particular property. I mean, we can't lose sight of the fact that they've been uh, a local presence here. And, and aside from that, you know, from a business standpoint, what benefit it's going to have for the residents. And, you know, quite frankly, we have, we have one shot at this to uh, stand tall and object to it if we collectively as a board and as a community, you know, want to vote to be against it. I think uh, residents are relying on us, quite frankly. I mean, this is one of the, I think in all the years of public service that I've, uh, you know, I certainly can't speak to the volumes that some of my other colleagues have had, but these are the times when you really have to rise to the occasion and support the residents that elected you into this position. And I think overall, the overwhelming majority consensus that I'm hearing from, um, they're opposed to this project. And I, I'm pleased with the manager and the administrative team, uh, Paul, and and all of the town personnel uh, for the fact that we're considering being an intervener as well. Um, certainly some of the comments that were made in the previous meeting that it, it's, it's going to be labor intensive and it's going to have a lot of work associated with it. But I, I think we owe it to ourselves as a community to do everything we can to avail ourselves to every opportunity to oppose the project. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, I do stand in opposition of, of the proposed pipeline. Thank you, Ms. O'Connell. Yeah, I agree with uh, everything Judy just said so articulately. I, I just want to thank Paul uh, for what you've been doing here, point man here, because there is so much uh, information coming in and the whole intervener process, as we spoke at the last meeting, is going to be labor intensive. But um, as Judy just said, it's something that I think we have to do and we really have to uh, be a part of this uh, right from and again thank you for for being the point man on this I see you come in with the map and the stack of papers there and so I yeah I, I imagine but um, but thanks thank you so um, if it's okay with the board uh, our uh, on the agenda you will look down and see number six as a board to consider uh, the board taking or adopting a position on the Northeast Energy Direct project um, well, we've just, I think, concluded the 720 appointment, which was a discussion. Um, again, unless there's objection, I'd like to uh, cover the number six bullet and accept a motion uh, for the board to take a, an official position on this project, if what, someone's willing to make one. Is, uh, is the position to be uh, reflected by the proposed resolution? I think the resolution, unless I'm mistaken, the resolution is, uh, forgive me here, is the resolution is specific to the, to, to the um, us pursuing the role as intervener. So there, there, I, there are 
two different things, if I'm not mistaken. That would be yes. my interpretation. That's seven. Right. So the next, the next item on the agenda on the board to consider would be seven, and that would be the intervener language that you referred to. I move that the uh, uh, Board of Selectmen oppose the Northeast Energy Direct project. Second. second. Uh, the motion has been made and seconded. I'll accept the second from Mr. Samaglia. It was kind of a tie there, Judy. Sorry. Okay. Um, so uh, that being said, is there further discussion? I see none. All in favor? It is unanimous, and I'm delighted by that. Thank you all. Um, that said, I think it is appropriate to, cons uh, to continue on this vein and uh, discuss the recommendation of the manager uh, to uh, have the board consider becoming an intervener uh, on the Northeast Direct project. And Mike, uh, Mike Newhouse, that is, um, it seems like you had some specific points of uh, observations you wanted to make there. Yeah, actually, just a question. Um, um, my intention is to support the um, motion to become an intervener uh, substantively as set forth in the proposed resolution. Uh, my simple question is, um, it's really just a clerical uh, issue. In the second, whereas, uh, talks about the Board of Selectmen uh, strongly oppose the aforementioned pipeline as previously, um, and, I, and I think there's probably a phrase that got dropped, and I uh, just want to make sure that it's in there, and I'm, whether that's uh, as previously outlined by the town manager or if it's as previously presented by Kinder Morgan, to me it's all the same thing. Um, just yes. whatever the intention is, let's let's make sure we're clear to stick that in there when we adopt the resolution, that's all. Uh, that, that is uh, correct, uh, Selectman Newhouse. The intent is to uh, 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 reference, it should read, uh, we the Wilmington Board of Selectmen do hereby strongly oppose the aforementioned pipeline, uh, and I think it would actually just um, cut off at that point. Oh, okay, that's fine too. Uh, so I, what I would suggest is uh, that the board adopt the resolution. We'll have the document revised uh, for uh, signature. Uh, you, you, either uh, you can come into the office uh, as time permits or it can be brought forward at the next meeting. I would just point out that one of the reasons that, uh, that I'm recommending that this action be taken now is that, uh, again, it's not clear when the filing, uh, Kinder Morgan's filing will take place, but once the filing uh, is submitted to uh, the, to FERC, uh, parties uh, have 21 days uh, to respond if they wish to be an intervener. So uh, my uh, thought is that by the board taking this action now, uh, the town will be poised to uh, respond. Yeah, so I, the, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say to that point, I mean, is, is there any time sensitivity as to when this gets officially signed by us such that we're within the timeline to be an intervener? So in other words, should we hang around tonight and do it? No, I, I think that uh, it's not likely it'll happen, um, it, you know, even if it happens tomorrow, worst case, uh, board members can come in and, okay. and sign off on it. I think if the board is so inclined to take the vote tonight, that's really the key, and then you can sign it uh, sure. later. Okay. Mr. Nose, did you have? I'm sorry, no, that's I had a question. Okay. that's great. I, I just uh, wanted to make sure. Um, so we're just dropping we, as that we got that. And. Right. Got it, Roger. I'll so, make that motion. Uh, Lou has made the motion that we accept uh, this uh, this recommendation with the uh, the removal of as previously in the second whereas. Is there a second to that? Is it Second. The motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous for the Board of Selectmen to be a intervener. Uh, so I guess I, we would just ask that everyone try to stop in over the course of the next couple of business days to make that signature. Thank you all. When you're ready, we can jump into uh, number one on communications, Jeff, which is, ironically, uh, yes, so under uh, communications, uh, I received uh, last week, uh, actually I guess it was, you know, it was last week, 
uh, correspondence from Kinder Morgan uh, seeking authorization uh, to conduct some survey work uh, on uh, town property. Uh, the property is actually right on the Wilmington uh, North Reading line. Uh, there's actually one parcel that is on the Wilmington side of the border and a second parcel that is owned by the town of Wilmington but is on the North Reading, within North Reading. Uh, it is uh, my uh, intention to not, not to uh, grant the, the permission and I asked uh, Paul to have his office uh, take a look at the potential consequences and there's a memorandum uh, that uh, Bill Holt, the assistant engineer, uh, provided and I'll just highlight some of the points uh, that uh, he's identified. Uh, two of the parcels in question are both located entirely within the Zone 2 Aquifer Groundwater Protection District. Uh, this area is critical to protect uh, several of the town's wells used for public water supply. Uh, and is sugge he's suggesting the proponent review all the local, state, and federal regulations and guidelines for use and work conducted within the GWPD. Uh, if borings uh, are allowed, the proponent should outline the steps they intend to implement uh, to uh, prevent uh, any potential contamination to the aquifer. So that certainly is uh, a key issue. Portions of the study area depicted are located within Zone 1, which is uh, 400 foot radius of the town well, Salem, uh, uh, the Salem uh, uh, well field. Uh, clearly that's a very sensitive area and I would not be particularly inclined to want to have work going on there. And there are a number of other uh, points that are made here, but uh, uh, so it's my intention not to uh, authorize uh, that work. Thank you. Uh, there's an invitation uh, from Louis Semeglia, the uh, Director, uh, Department of Veteran Services. I'll just read uh, the letter. The, the Wilmington Department of Veteran Services invites you and the Board of Selectmen to participate in remembering and honoring all our past and present veterans on Wednesday, November 11, 2015. Uh, we will assemble at the 4th of July parking lot at 10.45 a.m. and proceed to the Town Common for this year's Veterans Day ceremonies at 11 a.m. I would like to personally invite you to say a few words, if you would. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. We'll look forward to that. Uh, next is a, uh, an FYI. Uh, this is a, a policy uh, that's been drafted uh, with regard to the appointment of members to the Finance Committee. Uh, the members of the uh, appointing committee uh, have worked on this. Uh, I've participated in these discussions um, during the course of the last, uh, I guess, two or three months uh, to prepare a policy that uh, makes it clear how appointments and reappointments will be made. Uh, I won't go through uh, or, or read the document, certainly, but I think it's uh, the intent is clearly to make the process as transparent as possible uh, and to ensure that uh, anyone who is interested in participating on the Finance Committee uh, has an equal opportunity uh, for consideration. I just have a quick question, if I may, just to seek to understand on, on the first paragraph, um, just to read it, finance committee members who are unable to complete their term for any reason shall submit a written notice establishing their resignation date to the town clerk and copy of the town manager, chair of the finance committee, and the town moderator. Um, was it intended to leave the chairman of the board of selectmen off of that distribution list? No. Uh, no, the chairman of the board of selectmen is, uh, is a member of the appointing committee. So could you consider adding that in? Uh, let's see, which point are you? Um, number, number one. one. Number it's one. Right there. Judy, we've looked at this thing. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times and I didn't catch it. And I'm, and I'm the guy that, that's, that's omitted, so thank you. That's, it was certainly an omission. Thanks.
Uh, the next under correspondence is... If, if I could, uh, Mr. Chairman, on, on that, I received a uh, phone message uh, from someone who is is apparently interested and had expressed uh, an interest previously. Now, I know that that um, there's been some sort of press release, but uh, I, I'd um, feel remiss if I didn't pass along that information uh, because I um, thought I had this person's phone number and I don't. So, you know, I've got this voicemail that says, I'm interested. I, I see that they that they um, expressed an interest. So I will um, pass that Glad, information yeah. along. There to is you. A, an application uh, that I think has been made uh, available to download off the website, but you know it's also available by hard copy. But I'm certainly glad if there's an individual, I'll reach out to them personally and walk them through the process. We want to engage as many folks as possible and make sure that it's, that it's an easy process for anyone who would be interested in serving the town to do so. Okay, and 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 to that end. Um, just to the extent that folks would be watching uh, this meeting, um, I did read this in its entirety, uh, and I'm trying to figure out where I get things in my brain, whether it was from a previous draft or from this, um, uh, or from the memorandum. Uh, but but you are um, the appointing committee is planning to fill. Um, this vacancy how I mean I, I'm not asking to read all of this but yeah. just to publicize maybe in, in a paragraph or less what, what's the process going forward uh, so I, I don't have the dates right off the top of my head I believe that right now it's out there and available and up through October October 23rd yes uh, through the end of October 23rd uh, the town manager will receive applications um, those are applications as I mentioned a moment ago that are available on the website or in hard copy here at Town Hall um, so they can submit their application uh, forgive and, and help me go through the dates but then once all of those are submitted then the copies of all of them will be uh, dispersed to the three of us that make up the appointing authority uh, we as individuals on the appointing authority will have opportunity, I suppose, to reach out to the candidates and have direct communication um, if, uh, if that's appropriate or, or the individuals can uh, reach out to us for that matter. Uh, then on the 29th, is yes. that right? On the 29th, there will be a public meeting. Um, it will be posted. Uh, it'll be in this room, room nine, and uh, any of the candidates who wish to be present uh, and speak on their own behalf are certainly invited to do so. They are not required to do so. Um, but it is at that meeting, uh, once any uh, open discussion is concluded, that the uh, appointing authority would deliberate and ultimately make a vote for the, uh, the, next, the next member of the, uh, the Finance Committee. Is that? Okay. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I'm trying to, uh, I mean, the, I mean the, the policy that's been promulgated um, by yourself and uh, the current chairman of the finance committee and the town moderator um, you know that is what it is that's the that's the process and the policy that uh, you three collectively um, have decided works best um, I, I there's no need for me to speak to that other than it seems to be a waste of an opportunity not to to you know publicize oh. that information right now in this medium that's all yeah so um, um, you know no, that, I appreciate that's it. that's uh, I, I don't have anything to add relative to the um, relative to the policy I just wanted to make sure that information was out there to the best we can no I appreciate that Mike especially the the specifics of this particular appointment that we're in the process of re recruiting for um, and it was remiss uh, I was remiss for not specifically bringing that up so I appreciate you bringing that to our attention that the, the dictates or the the verbose uh, notes or, or bullets in this guideline um, you know, it, we tried to call it down to the the necessary bullets, but you know, with, with three folks uh, really sort of chiming in and wanting to make sure that their uh, observations were were heard and that their feelings uh, were, were reflected, uh, and to make sure that we're as open and and uh, deliberate and fair in this process, uh, the, the 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 process that's written out in front of you is what evolved out of that. Um, you know, some of it it could be argued that there's maybe extra language that is uh, maybe unnecessary, but it was my feeling that it, if it's 
if it's worth bringing up in conversation, it's worth writing down and having it uh, to, to, to refer back to. Myself, I feel like I know what the process is because I've sort of been through it now uh, over the course of the summer. But uh, it's a guideline, hopefully, for any future members of the appointing authority to use. They don't have to be married to this. And if future members of the appointing authority, that being the chair of this board, the chair of the finance committee, or the town moderator, if they deem it appropriate to make adjustments to this guideline, then, then that's certainly up to them as long as it uh, continues to be fair and open and, and uh, transparent to the, to the town and, uh, and we get the best candidates possible. So uh, that was the in intent and the impetus behind putting this together in the first place. And again, I do appreciate you bringing up the, uh, the dates specific for this appointment. We look forward to having a, a, a nice pool of candidates uh, put their names in. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Please. I would just add that while the application, uh, there is an application on the town's website, it, it's available for uh, individuals who are interested in any boards or committees. Uh, if individuals are interested in simply submitting a, a letter of interest, and uh, that's uh, acceptable as well. Yeah, I, I, just Thank in, you, you know, I, I was prepared just to move on here, but the point that you made that there were three different you know, opinions on this. My understanding is that there were four, but I mean, be that as it may, um, you know, it's still the policy that's adopted by the three. Thank you. Uh, next is a correspondence from uh, Paul Regan from uh, the uh, MAPC, Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Uh, it's uh, notice of uh, upcoming elections for uh, seats on the uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization. Uh, the, the letter indicates there are four municipal open seats on the MPO. Uh, the town of Arlington is running unopposed for an at-large town seat. The city of Newton is running unopposed for the at-large city seat. The city of Woburn is running unopposed for the North Suburban Planning Council seat. Town of Norwood is running unopposed uh, for the Three River Interlocal Council seat. And it references uh, dates for absentee, absentee ballots and on the date of the election being the 29th of October. <clears throat> uh, next is uh, correspondence from Rick Colin from the Mass DOT. Uh, he is inviting uh, people to attend a comment session uh, regarding the various agencies that fall under DOT, namely highway, the, uh, RMV, MBTA, compu uh, commuter rail, or and the uh, uh, aeronautics uh, group. Uh, they're seeking uh, comments, uh, essentially looking for input uh, that will uh, shape the development of their capital investment program. Uh, there's a number of dates uh, throughout the, uh, the region. The closest to Wilmington is uh, occurring on October 27th at 6 p.m. in Lowell at the Middlesex Community College. Uh, and the final piece of correspondence is uh, from General Manager Frank DePola from the uh, MBTA. Uh, and he is uh, writing uh, about the uh, upcoming uh, winter season and, and notes this is a reminder request that uh, you again instruct your crews and contractors to refrain from salting areas immediately in the immediate vicinity of tracks, uh, uh, rail tracks in order to minimize instances of unwanted uh, activation. So apparently uh, putting the, the uh, snow and ice, uh, the uh, salt and sand down uh, close to the tracks can uh, activate the um, uh, control arms. So there's specific locations that are referenced, Kilmarnock Road, uh, Woburn Street, Concord Street, Middlesex Ave, Salem Street, Clark Street, Glen Road, and Salem Street. Thank you. So that concludes regular business. Uh, we have some board to consider that we didn't yet cover. Uh, I think we're down to number 10, if I'm not mistaken, Jeff. I think eight. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, thank you. I checked it and I shouldn't have. So it is a uh, board to consider. Thank you, Mike. Uh, a, a name change uh, for the owner of a flammable license from Hess Retail Operations LLC to Speedway LLC for property located at 273 Main Street. Uh, 
Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a recommendation from Sharon George. Uh, Hess Retail Operations is now changing their name to Speedway LLC. All documents, all documentation is up to date, including the 2015 Certificate of Registration. I see no reason not to approve the name change. If you have any questions, uh, do not hesitate to contact me. And that is uh, that is it. Any questions or a motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, request uh, we grant the request to change name and change owner of flamble license from Hess Retail LLC to Speedway LLC for property located at 273 Main Street. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. This requires your signature. Now I think we're at number 10. Number 10 uh, is a board to consider executing the collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Wilmington and the American Feder Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees Unit 1 for the period of July 1st, 2015 through June 30th, 2018. Mr. Hall. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is a three-year contract that runs from 7-1-15 uh, uh, through 6-30. Uh, uh, 18, and uh, we've been in discussions with uh, Ask Me Unit 1 uh, for several months now. Ask Me 1 represents the public buildings, custodial and maintenance personnel. Uh, some of the uh, key features of the agreement, uh, there's a, uh, the uh, uh, cost of living adjustments are uh, Two and a, half, a two and a quarter percent uh, retroactive to 7 1 uh, 2015, uh, two percent uh, for 7 1 2016, and two and a quarter percent uh, effective 7 1 2000, uh, 2017. Uh, also, certainly one of the uh, points that uh, is important uh, from the town's perspective is the change in the uh, way longevity uh, is granted. As you know, uh, up until uh, three years ago, uh, the, the unions that were entitled to longevity, it was done on a percentage basis. Uh, Ask Me Too was the first group to agree to change that to a, a flat rate basis uh, uh, due to the cooperation from Ask Me Unit 1. <clears throat> they followed suit and their uh, longevity uh, now will be on a flat rate basis uh, in five-year increments of service. So that's uh, certainly going to be helpful uh, from a financial perspective. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, you, you I think more? that's a uh, highlight. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion or questions? I move that we execute the collective bargaining agreement between the Town of Wilmington and the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees Unit 1 for the period of July 1st, 2015 through June 30th, 2018. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? I will be abstaining. Thank you. Thank you. Four and one abstain. Thank you. Next is a board to consider the town manager's reappointment uh, from number, uh, through November 1st. Uh, Reappointment November 1st to September 30th, 2016. Um, and that, that strikes me as I read that, that, um, that we, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, what the appointment that we made at the last meeting was to cover the month of October, but the intent was that the contract would uh, be retroactive through our starting uh, October 1st and through the three years. Is that, am I wrong about that? That's what my memory served. Anyone? Anyone? Because the way you have it written. Uh, that, <clears throat> that was my understanding, but uh, I'll leave it to the board to decide on that. Commencing October 1st. So the contract reads starting uh, October 1st. So ultimately, I think we would want to accept a vote to 
appoint the manager retroactive to October 1st of 2015 for the three-year three, three year period through, uh, through September 30th of 2018. Uh, and in that same motion, uh, adopt the contract uh, as agreed to, as agreed upon in executive session. Uh, and again, that was all being retroactive to October 1st uh, this year, which was my understanding of what our agreement was, unless there's some discussion or disagreement to that point. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Four in favor, one abstain. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would just uh, suggest that after the adjournment uh, that we have five copies of the uh, collective bargaining agreement for members to execute and then the, the uh, employment agreement. Thank you. Our last item is uh, for the board to consider uh, December and January meeting schedules. Um, so uh, I know in the past tradition has been, especially in December, uh, typically to, uh, to do one meeting and it feels to me, unless there's strong objection otherwise, that the 14th would be an appropriate date. I don't know if uh, there's any, any thoughts on that. Makes sense. Are there any administrative issues? That's just that the way the calendar drops. That's about as early as it can be. So is that, that that's uh, as you know the uh, the date for <clears throat> the board to consider a number of different licenses, the alcohol licenses, uh, uh, common victualler licenses. So that'll be a fairly uh, uh, busy meeting. And then what has been tradition? Forgive me for I, I didn't look at January. Um, would we just do the regular? the regular January dates or do we off do we uh, do one meeting in January as well what has been tradition no I think the uh, tradition has been to meet uh, the two times in January uh, based upon the way the calendar lines up uh, this year uh, it, it's uh, my uh, suggestion that the budget presentation occur the uh, on February First, which would be the following Monday. So uh, typically the board would meet on the 11th and the 25th. So in, in, if the board elects to go that on that schedule, uh, there would be meetings on the 11th, the 25th, and then on February 1st. So we get back to backs the 25th and then the next Monday after that. That's right. <clears throat> That's. Do we vote on that? Is that acceptable? No, I, I don't think it's necessary for a vote. I was just looking to uh, confirm the board's intentions, uh, particularly with regard to December, so we can plan, but just confirming for January. Is that okay, everybody? 12, 14, 111, 125? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. Public comments? I see none. <laughs> I don't think. Certainly invited up there, and then okay. Um, <laughs> new business and committee reports. Uh, let me just start very quickly and then I'll uh, go over to my right. Um, I got wind of today uh, a press release, and I don't know if maybe it came through the manager's office, but I want to make the public aware uh, that, believe it or not, Tennessee Gas Pipeline LLC uh, is holding three additional public community forums in Massachusetts for the Northeast Direct Project. Uh, and the one closest to us is at Spinelli's Function Facility, Route 1 South in Linfield, and that is dated on 1029 from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. So again, that's uh, the Kinder Morgan is ho holding a, uh, an open discussion, as it were, at Spinelli's uh, on the 29th of this month from 6 to 8. Uh, I suspect more communication about that will come out, uh, but I wanted the public to be aware of that now, especially in light of the discussions we had this evening. Uh, that's all for me. Um, I guess I'll start to my right, Mr. Newhouse. Uh, nothing at this time. Good. Cool. Good. Very good. Thank you. Mr. McCoy. I'm good, thank you. Ms. O'Connell. Uh, just a couple quick things. Um, just wanted to, uh, once again, thank everybody for wearing pink um, as the woman on the board. I uh, just wanted to bring that up and uh, say that obviously, you know, every month we do honor any charity or any uh, particular endeavor 
with uh, an article of clothing, but um, certainly breast cancer affects one in eight women in the United States, according to some of the most recent statistics, and it certainly does occur in men as well, but at a, at a lower percentage. Obviously, all the education and awareness and uh, early screening has been helpful, and um, the good news is, is that things continue to improve, but it certainly nevertheless uh, doesn't eradicate the disease, and there are many women and families uh, that are battling and winning the battle of this, uh, this, this disease daily. And so I, I just wanna uh, thank the board and also um, thank the town uh, overall for lighting it up pink and um, just wanted to offer those comments. In addition, wanted to comment quickly on the Yentile Farm Development Project that uh, we have, uh, we did provide an update over the summer. Um, we have gone through, I should say, the town manager has worked internally with uh, all the various departments to go through a last look on everything and do some value engineering and to make sure that we're within our budget limits that were set forth um, throughout the project. We are going to be meeting internally with Jeff's leadership, um, with Green and with myself as the chair, the vice chair and Kendra to take one last look at things before we have one of our final meetings um, as we prepare to go out to bid in the January timeframe of 2016. So just wanted to thank Jeff uh, for you know, really taking a leadership role on this internally to make sure that our project timelines are staying on target. And uh, we certainly will update the board in a more detailed manner as uh, time goes on and we have a more substantive update to share. But I just wanted to put that out there publicly because we haven't met in the last six to eight weeks and there's been a reason for that. Um, but we do anticipate meeting in the month of November of 2015. Okay, Great. thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Mr. Hull, anything uh, or important uh, important dates? Uh, important dates. Uh, October 14th <coughs> is the next uh, brush drop off Old Main Street, uh, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, October 14th is also the high school building committee uh, next meeting uh, at the high school in the conference room, 6.30 p.m. October 15th is the facilities master plan committee meeting here at Town Hall, room 9. Uh, October 16 and 17 is the Haunted Woods event at the Harndon Tavern, 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. October 17, the Townwide Flu Clinic, Town Hall Auditorium, noon uh, to 2 p.m. Also on the 17th of October is another brush drop-off, Old Main Street, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. October 21st, brush drop-off, Old Main Street, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. October 23rd, the Carter Lecture Fund uh, is running Sounds Like Frank at the middle, uh, Wilmington Middle School, 7 p.m. Uh, October 23rd and 24th, once again, the Haunted Woods Project at Wo uh, Harndon Tavern, 6.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. October 24, uh, brush drop off Old Main Street, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. October 25th is the annual Horribles Parade starting at Rotary Park, 4.30 p.m. Uh, October 26th is the next Board of Selectmen's meeting. Uh, October 26th through November 28th is the uh, time period for curbside collection of yard waste. Uh, October 28th is another brush drop off Old Main Street, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, October 28th is a program uh, that is at St. Thomas's Church, uh, navigating the troubled waters of substance abuse. Uh, starts at 7 p.m. I would strongly encourage uh, residents to check that out. Um, We've had a, uh, just by way of information, there's been a, a group uh, internally that has been meeting uh, comprised of uh, the two chiefs, uh, myself, uh, Mary Delay, uh, Doreen Crow, the um, uh, school nurse, uh, uh, Teresa, uh, or Terry, um, uh, Marciello, thank you, uh, Lou, uh, and Shelley Newhouse, uh, looking at uh, different ways that uh, we can uh, take some action to deal with the opioid uh, issue as well as other substance abuse issues that are occurring uh, not, not only here in Wilmington but um, all over the country essentially. And uh, this effort here, uh, Father Early had uh, contacted uh, Shelley Newhouse, uh, so Shelley has provided some assistance uh, in Mary and her staff in putting this program together. So um, I, I think it'll be very informative. If I may, please, mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to echo what the town manager just said. This uh, 
this will be worth worth the time out of your day. Uh, it's only an hour and a half, Wednesday, October 28th. Uh, maybe give you some good ideas, good, good way to talk to your children and let them know of the dangers of uh, the opioid addiction. It only takes one time. And uh, Wilmington is not um, like, I mean, Wilmington is just like everywhere else. It's, a, it's, a, it's an epidemic that we have to, um, have to address. And I think we as a town are doing a good job at that. And um, October 28th, 7 o'clock. Just to ask, is, is it in the, the main church? Is that where it's going to be? taking place yes not yeah. in the villanova it's in the actual no it's main in the main church, church. it'll okay. be in the main upstairs and something to that point thank you judy you know i want to make sure that people are aware this is not a this is not a religious denominational kind of connection i think it just it, the, the organization made contact with father early and i think that's how it sort of spawned out of that but um it is for the entire community irrespective of your your faith um or whether you have any so i just i, I think it's important what Lou said is that folks come out. It is adults only. Um, it is for uh, those of us who have children or, or have children around us in our lives uh, to be able to deal with uh, the, uh, the concerns of this horrible uh, epidemic. Um, so again, it's non-denominational and adults only, and I hope we get a very good turnout. Uh, that's it, that was the last bullet. Um, so uh, I, I guess I would accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Good night. Second. Thank you. Thank you.